Like, you're just crazy to see like all the things you work for just it's, it's here. It's here. It's here. It's right here, bro, right now. I'm shaking though, that's for sure. <laughs> Got hits when they throw in a fastball. Just too quick for it. Peeling off like the whip orange. Seen they effort this piss poor. I got too much, I gotta tend to. Car payments in the rent due. Told y'all that I'm six foot, but with the money stabbing, I'm ten to. Too much that I've been through, so I put it all in that rear view. Clean money in a black whip. Got old problems with the friends new. Yeah, I'm in the big leagues. Told them don't miss me. Ballin' like Houston. Ayy, feeling like Whitney. Yeah, I need a bag, bruh. Send it through quickly. I'm making his dog. Like I'm in a big lease. Yeah. In July of 2017, Julio Rodriguez was signed as an international free agent by the Seattle Mariners at the age of 16. At this time, Julio was ranked as the number six overall international prospect available, with the number one prospect being Wander Franco. In 2017, Julio Rodriguez had an overall scouting grade of just 50, which in the MLB grading scale is a solid average player at the major league level. For future reference, a 60 would be an all-star caliber player, a 70 would be a perennial all-star, and an 80 would be a Hall of Fame caliber player. Back to 16-year-old Julio, his hit tool was right around average, his power was one notch above average, his run tool was below average, his arm was also one tick above average, and his fielding was right at average. In 2017, Julio Rodriguez was ranked as the number 10 overall international prospect, with Wander Franco coming in at number two, and none other than Shohei Otani, who was signed of December of that year, coming in at number one. At the time, Julio was a big-bodied right fielder and began his professional career at the rookie level of Dominican Summer League in 2018. Julio Rodriguez's first professional season was one to remember. The 17-year-old from the Dominican Republic dominated the Dominican Summer League to earn the league's most valuable player award. He led the DSL in almost every offensive category, and he played stellar defense in the 59 games there. Now, it's on to Arizona, where he'll participate in the club's high-performance camp designed to develop players' minds and bodies. It's the club's goal to build on his athleticism his strength and his flexibility. He'll spend time in the weight room, but he'll also learn about leadership programs, community service programs, and developing his mental skills. Originally signed by the Mariners for $1.75 million in 2017, there's no rush to move Rodriguez through the system, but the Mariners know they have something special and they want him to be prepared for the challenges he will face. Over the next few years, Julio climbed the ranks and in 2021 began playing for the Everett Aqua Sox. It only took him a few months before he was promoted to Double A Arkansas. Ripped on a line to left field. That one is long gone. A missile off the bat of Rodriguez for his second home run of the ball game. And it was a busy summer for Julio as he played in the 2021 Futures game. Hey, what's up, Burners fans? This is Julio Rodriguez. We are out here in the Futures, Futures Stars game. I'm really excited to represent you all, to represent my country, everybody here. Thank you for your support. Love you all as well as just a month later going on to represent Team Dominican Republic in the Tokyo Olympics, walking away with a bronze medal. At the end of the 2021 season, Julio jumped up to the number two overall MLB prospect and his scouting grades had taken a leap as well. His hit tool was now up to a 60, which is an all-star level. Power tool was up to a 65. His run was still average. Arm is up to a 60. Fielding at a 55. And his overall grading being between an all-star level and a perennial all-star level. And Greg, you know, you didn't put any pressure on the kid saying he's a Soto Tatis mix. You know, <laughs> don't worry about that. But the fact that you said that Yonder, you said he was doing it over and yeah. over and over again means this is a guy who understands his swing. And at least from the drill standpoint, he has mastered the mechanics of what he wants to bring to the plate. Yeah, he was and gushing I, about him. He was gushing. And about I will him. say this: he's taking that next role. Like he, he went up to Ichiro and he said, "I want you to be my throwing partner." 
you know, I want to learn from you. I want you to take me into the batting cage and tell me what you're doing so that way I can perfect this. I think this kid's going to be phenomenal. Did you agree my list that he's number one? I think he's number one. Moving into spring training, Julio wasn't guaranteed a spot for the opening day roster. And the word coming from his camp was that he was working to get more agile in the offseason, as well as learning to play center field, because that was his route to get on the Mariners roster. But if anyone still had any doubt, he would finish the spring with a 412 batting average with three home runs, three stolen bases, and an OPS of 1.281, raking at the dish while playing a stellar center field. The O2. Swing destroyed. This is going to the tenth city, baby. That is destroyed, clobbered, and gone. Oh my gosh. I mean, it's only spring training, but that. <laughs> Two breaking balls. Try the third breaking ball, middle in, and oh, good night, everybody. That was vapor. And he even topped it off with an inside the park home run off of one of the top closers in the league, Emmanuel Class A. You look comfortable in center field. I am. Yeah, I am. If you had to play center field in a big stadium with an extra deck on it, you think you can handle that? Yeah, come on. I think it's time, William. Yeah. I think it's time. Bring on the J Rod show. Okay? You good for that? Yes. Come here. <laughs> you are a big leader, my man. That's all. Right. Well, well, you. It's just crazy to see like all the things you work for just is it's here, it's here, it's here, it's right here, bro, right now. I'm shaking, though, that's for sure. <laughs> I need a bag, bro. Send it too quickly. I'm making his dog. I feel like I'm, like I'm, I'm in my big life league. Better. Yeah, I'm headed out of stands. Like, I honestly accomplished a dream of mine. I had my, never really thought that I was gonna do it, but I have my signature bag now. We're about to sell them big things from the west side. Stay tuned for all that. And just keep dreaming and keep working hard towards it. Let's go. J-Rod Show. He's on. He's on. He's on. Okay. Just too there you go, for first it. base hit for Julio! He's digging for two, two. Car and he's gonna get the hit! Time for the second base! Let's see. We weren't down there. Julio runs, throwing from his knee, Sanchez. Sanchez, no chance. Julio gets up and he'll get the third. There you go. Hammer! Blast off! Left field! Number one! Here it comes! Like I'm in a big league. Julio Rodriguez yeah, with a match of, of a three-run bomb. I deserve another hundred fans. Told them this was always in the plans. I just did it because they said I can't. Blowing you. I got a big one. Set up in that bag. Wow. Wow. Julio Rodriguez was just named the AL Rookie of the Month for the second month in a row, making him the first Mariner player to win back-to-back -back Rookie of the Month awards since Ichiro did it twice in 2001, and he's the first AL player to win back-to-back -back Rookie of the Month awards since Houston's Jordan Alvarez in 2019. For June, Julio led all AL rookies in wins above replacement, weighted runs created plus, hits, runs, home runs, RBIs, total bases, and times on base, while tying for the AL rookie lead in stolen bases. Also in June, Julio hit the first of three consecutive home runs on June 22nd in Oakland to mark the first time since 2004 that the Mariners had gone back to back to back. Now with his home run yesterday against the Padres, Julio became the fastest player in MLB history in just 81 games to reach 15 plus home runs and 20 plus stolen bases, surpassing Ellis Brooks and Barry Bonds. Julio would end up being the only rookie selected the All-Star Game, and he ended up competing in the Home Run Derby, hitting the second most home runs in a derby with 81. Over the wall, 21, 22 now. Part of the beauty of this is that 
the players down the line, they are watching, they're standing up watching Julio Rodriguez right now. You got Kershaw standing and watching this display that this young 21 year old is putting on. Last few seconds here, Kershaw standing, he's going to start the All-Star game, and Rodriguez ends it with a flurry and a big fly. That's Evictus. And now, as of recording this video, in his rookie year as a 21-year-old, Julio Rodriguez is batting 266 with 21 home runs, 65 RBIs, 32 walks, 23 stolen bases, with an on-base percentage of 326, a slugging of 472, which gives him an OPS of 798. He's currently on pace for 26 home runs and 29 stolen bases on the year. And when you consider the time that he missed due to injury, if he can remain healthy and keep up his pace for home runs and stolen bases the remainder of the year, then it's pretty realistic to say that he's got a shot at a 30-30 season. Now you may ask how many times Griffey had a 30-30 season, or if he did it in his rookie year, but it turns out the closest Griffey came to 30-30 was in 1998 with 56 home runs and 20 steals, and in 1999 with 48 home runs and 24 steals. So if Julio can do this, let alone in his rookie year, he'd be surpassing something that Griffey never did in his entire career. And then last week, it was announced that Julio was signed to an extension with the Mariners, which will end up being one of the most complicated contracts in history. But in short, Julio has made it clear that he wants to be a Mariner for life, and he wants to bring a championship to Seattle. I'm just happy to be a Mariner. I'm just happy to be a Mariner for as long as I can. I'm happy to you guys for giving me the opportunity to change my family's life. Not today, but... Uh, 2017 when you guys gave me the opportunity and, I, and since that day I felt committed to you guys and as Ulysses said this is not about the contract how long it is I would love to be a Mariners for the rest of my career and play in front of the Mariners fans for the rest of my career play, play with a lot of these guys here being managed by Scott having Ty as my babysitter be with Mitch I, everybody <laughs> nah. like, I, I genuinely mean that I love being here I love be, being with everybody and I love to keep representing this city and Bring a campus because that's all we want here, and I know that's what we're driving for. Win for the city and win for these fans. Let's get into the details of that extension. This is one of the more complex contracts to come about, and really the only simple thing about this contract is that there is a full no-trade clause, so Julio cannot be traded to any team throughout this entire contract, which is great. The bare bones of this contract are a seven-year, $119.3 million contract, which includes a $15 million signing bonus. And this contract starts in 2023, so starting next year. And the base contract runs through 2029. After 2029, there are a couple options. Either the Mariners can pick up their club option for 2030 and beyond, or if the Mariners were to decline their club option, which is highly unlikely, then Julio could pick up his player option, which would have different circumstances. Now, assuming the Mariners pick up that club option for 2030 and beyond, they actually have to decide on picking up that option after 2028, and the size and length of that team option is dependent on Julio's performance from 2022 through the end of 2028. So if we come down here looking at the 2030 club option, which must be decided on after 2028, depending on the amount of MVP votes that Julio gets between that span and how many MVPs he wins, his contract can span anywhere from a minimum of eight years, 200 million, which is $25 million a year annually, up to a 10 year, $350 million contract, which would be $35 million annually. So let's say Julio wins two MVPs or he gets four top five votes in the MVPs during that span, then his new contract would turn into a 10 year extension at $350 million total, which is $35 million a year. And that would bring the grand total of the contract up to a 17 year, $469.3 million contract, which would be the largest contract in MLB history and one of the largest contracts in all of sports in history. Now let's say the Mariners decide to decline that club option for 2030 and beyond, which is highly unlikely because we all assume that Julio is going to perform at a very high rate. But if they were to decline that club option, Julio would have the option of picking up a player option, which would be a five-year extension. This player option could span anywhere from a five-year $90 million contract up to a five-year $125 million contract, depending on the amount of silver sluggers, all-star selections, and MVPs that Julio wins from 2022 to 2028. 
Since Julio has the option of picking up this player option no matter what, technically the total amount of money that Julio is guaranteed is at least $209.3 million, including that first seven year contract and then plus that base amount of his player option if he were to pick that up. And then as typical, there's various other bonuses that are included in here. So he'll make a certain amount of money if he wins the MVP, if he wins the World Series MVP, the League Championship Series MVP, Silver Slugger, Gold Gloves, or any All-Star selections. Not only is this a big deal because it could be the largest contract in MLB history, but it also shows a new way of how to structure a contract to give the player the incentives as well as the guaranteed money. Julio gets a guarantee of $209.3 million dollars, with the incentive of being the highest paid player in history, assuming that he lives up to his potential, which both Julio and Seattle believe he can do. It's also big for Seattle because it shows other players on the team, as well as future free agents, that Seattle is willing to spend and commit to players when the time and the opportunity is there. Julio Rodriguez very well might be the next face of baseball, and to have him recruiting for your team for the next 17 years, potentially, is a big deal. It's also big that the club won't have to compete with the open market once Julio reaches free agency, and they won't have to go through a scenario like the Nationals did with Juan Soto, or like the Yankees are currently going through with Aaron Judge. And needless to say, it's going to be an absolute blast to watch this guy play for the Mariners for potentially his entire career. So make sure your TV is on the right channel, and tune in to the J-Rod Show. Thank you for watching, and if you made it this far, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, give it a share, and we'll see you next time. All right, guys, goodbye, Zondi. Don't forget it. Stop it. Tolling don't miss me. Balling like Houston. Hey, feeling like Whitney. Yeah, I need a bag, bruh. Send it through quickly.